Yes, uh, thank you very much, Sharon. Uh, can, can you guys see my screen? My voice is clear. All right, so um, hi everyone. I wish I was able to see your faces and we have this conversation in person. Um, the project that we are working on right now, as it says from the title, it's very much applied. We are working with a group of Caltrans engineers known as the PDCA team. And uh, we have an advisory board, Norm and Saeed Saidi. Um, it's a project that has, they do a lot with designing bridges. So uh, as you, you will see, as I go through the presentation, um, it's very much applied. Uh, we started the project very recently and given uh, some constraints that we had both from the uh, administrative side and on the application of the work that we're gonna present later on, we are just stepping, uh, uh, slowly but surely to the end product. Um, before I start, acknowledgement of Peer and Caltrans for all the uh, help that they have given us the past few years. I have a list of projects that we have done with uh, Peer and Caltrans. Uh, the work that we have, we are doing right now, which is mentioned at the very end, is basically is the logical next step to take all the research that we have done to the design floor. And uh, let's start with the problem statement. Ashto and uh, Caltrans Sizing Design Criteria, also known as the SDC, they define performance target uh, for ordinary bridges as they expect it to remain standing, but may suffer significant damage re uh, requiring closure. It has all the bells and whistles of a um, uh, code statement, and it is all based on analysis uh, using spectrum of the site, although that sometime history is allowed, but usually for these ordinary standard bridges, it is done with uh, spectral analysis. Uh, it doesn't do PBE the way that we at Peer do PBE, and my next slide is gonna talk about this. And uh, it doesn't look into the transportation network and all the good things that Jack and uh, his students showed early on in the previous session. Now in Peer, uh, we know these four random variables. It's, okay, thank you very much. And uh, by comparing the two, you come up with a good, bad, or ugly design. This is not new for our engineers. This is the basis of LRFD design. The only thing that we're doing different in implementing PBE and design in the new way is to look into the damage measures, rather than only looking EVPs from, um, just engineering judgment, let's say. Now, in parallel to all of these thinking that we were doing, there is a group of engineers at Caltrans who actually thought about this approach. And they have a way in the paper that they presented earlier uh, in ASD structures called probabilistic damage control application and the rest of the title, also known as the PDCA, that they have taken the peer methodology to some extent and come up with a way that they can design bridges for target performance. I'm gonna show how they're doing the work, but all the things that we have done in the past few years in terms of modeling and utilizing simulated ground motions for performance assessment of bridges and the new design procedures and tools that we develop, all of that can work with the work of these engineers to come up with a final product that can hit the design floor. And that is what this project is all about. Now, um, we cannot have a discussion about bridges without showing the model. The model of our bridge, which you are utilizing in this project, is something that is coming from the work that we earlier did with ET at UCLA through our 2008 project, and later on to the recent work that we are doing, uh, again, with Caltrans and others funding. It's a relatively simple model compared to the sophistication, sophistications that uh, Don and others showed early on in this session of the, um, uh, of the peer workshop. And we have ways and means to take some of these bridges, bridge A, B, C, and F, which is a two-span, single column, two-span, two-column, multi-span, multi-column bridges, across California and do a design for a target site. I'm gonna come back to this notion later on, but all I'm trying to convey in these two slides is that we have simple, relatively simple models that they can be tailored for the location of, um, for the site and design them. Now, um, let's go back to the PDCA team 
and talk about how they suggest designing or proportioning the components, important components of the bridge, and this in particular case columns. And later on, I'm gonna say how our project is gonna help them come up with a way that this approach hits the design flow. Um, the, the columns, the column of the bridge is designed by or proportion based on the experience by the bridge engineer. They conduct pushover analysis. And there's a slide here. There's this picture here that you can see pushing of the column, you reach ultimate capacity and then yield. These two numbers in terms of drift is estimated. Estimate of uh, demand is done through ESA, equivalent static analysis, um, for 975 year return period. This is put into this equation down here in terms of called the damage index. It is the difference between demand to the yield point divided by capacity to the yield point. It basically means how much of the capacity of the column you have exhausted. We want this to be around 0.35, which basically means you're going to be at the median of damage state three based on the work that Saidi and co-workers have done at UNR. My next slide is going to talk about that. And from here, you're going to do, now that you have your uh, column, or bridge a model, you can do nonlinear time history analysis, identify mean and standard deviation of this damage index, running 51 gram motions. From the work that Saidi and co workers did at UNR, you get fragility information in terms of mean and standard deviation of the damage index. This is capacity. You find probability of failure by, by the good old beta or a reliability integral. And then, based on if the probability of failure is acceptable or not, you go for a redesign or you accept the design and move to the detail or not, detailed design. Now, much of the work that you're doing or half of the work that you do depends on the work that Saeed, uh, that, uh, Saeed Saeed did at UNR, which is basically developing these fragility curves, damages for bridge columns. I, have bring, I brought the uh, beta equation, very simple, from the work that they have done at UNR, information about mean and standard deviation or kind of coefficient of variation of capacity is important. What we need to do is to find what is the mean and standard deviation of demand, which is done by the good old either IMEDP or you have a catalog of earthquake that you can do a brute force IMEDP, but in essence, you want the mean and standard deviation of demand damage index at uh, 225 years, 975 years, and 2500 year return period. And from there, find your beta and say if the uh, target, bridge, target bridge is good, bad, or ugly. Now, the work that we do in this project is to just focus on this coefficient of variation. The uh, PDCA team. Um, suggests that the estimate of mean estimate or the estimate of the mean value of demand is probably good enough based on either current approaches or using limited number of ground motion to find the mean. But coefficient of variation or dispersion of damage index is something that is very expensive to catch, especially for um, practicing engineers for many different reasons. So this is where the target of our project comes in. We want to quantify the variability of damage index across California and find if it's been influenced by bridge geometry and regional factors. And then once we have all this foundational information, we would like to maybe see if we can do any reductions and find any way to make it practical for the engineers to use. Now. For task one, we decided to focus on a single column bridge and even from there, even focus on a single column, forget about the bridge. We have a matrix of possible columns with heights between 20 and 50 feet, axial force varying between 5% to 15% of F prime CAG, reinforcement ratio, this is longitudinal reinforcement ratio, one to two and a half uh, percent, and the diameter of a column between five to eight. We're going to have two ways of designing these columns based on the current STC approach, 
which is relatively detailed. I wouldn't bother you with this, except for a couple of slides I'm going to show later in this presentation, or the PDCA approach, which I just showed you. We're going to do this for four locations first, and the locations are mentioned here for you, Eureka, Oakland, uh, LA downtown, and San Diego. For the three hazard levels, we're going to do the estimate of coefficient of variation of damage index demand. We're going to look into record selection uh, approach. You're going to select and scale your ground motions to a target SA or to a range of uh, SA on a spectrum. And looking into using simulated ground motions using the Armander, Kirovian, and coworkers approach, which is purely stochastic, or using recorded ground motions with the NJ West 2 uh, database. Now, with this, we're going to take this entire work to, the, to California. We have identified four different regions. And uh, by taking this to this, uh, put it on steroids, the work that we're doing for a single column, we want to identify these contour maps of coefficient of variation of the damage index. Now, this is not the end of the project. We're going to repeat this thing once we have basic idea, but this time do it with bridges. In other words, we're going to use bridge A, bridge B, bridge C, and bridge F, design for each one of those grid locations. As I mentioned, we have the tools to do this, and we have even some of the codes to uh, make this implementation, and eventually come up and basically verify if the coefficient of variation that we receive from a single column can be applied to uh, bridges. On this particular target, we have looked into um, different parameters that uh, um, govern the geometry of the bridge. There are some rules of thumb that how much the diameter of the bridge is related to the thickness of the deck and other stuff that I wouldn't bother you with the details. Everything comes down to what is the length to width of a bridge. We have done some statistical evaluation of current bridges and by doing this randomization of these probabilities of each one of these variables that govern the bridge geometry, we have put them together. The slide shows length of span, horizontal axis is width of bridge. The blue dots that you see is from the bridge database. These are real bridges where they fall into this um, geometry. Sure, sure. And um, from the database that we created ourselves, basically randomly picking uh, from the distribution of um, with geometry, as you can see, we have a good way of estimating what true bridges look like. And when we do our work, the results are not just a mathematical or an academic exercise. It is something that the bridge engineers can, their, can, ha, can hang their hat on. Um, moving forward with two minutes, the deliverables are, uh, and I put them in an order of font size, the big picture is we're going to give coefficient of variation across California. If there is a baseline COV for damage index and how much it depends on different characteristics, regional uh, and um, geometric properties of the bridge. And if the mean estimate is good enough with spectral methods or what is the, uh, let's say, fudge factor that you want to use if you use spectral methods compared to using uh, sophisticated nonlinear time history analysis. Now, um, the current status is that we have developed the framework, we have designed the bridges or columns, or some of the bridges, one of the bridges, all the columns. Uh, we have the tools to push this in high performance computing and re receive the results. Um, a little bit about the modeling, and I promise you I wouldn't take more than one minute of your time. We have a team that is closely looking into our work, and this is highly appreciated because we want to make sure that the work hits the design floor. So the PDCA approach, the target DI is uh, 0.35 with the ultimate hoop strain of 18%. SDC has a different characteristics for their designs. Everything is being implemented in the Mander model for the concrete that we use. And basically we're gonna look in, we're gonna discriminate the output in terms of designs based on PDCA, design based on SDC, and if there is any intersection. So we're not going to just dump the result and say, here it is. We're going to also look into what is the difference between uh, the current design based on SDC and what would be the design based on future PDCA. 
Um, and I think this is just the sample of the results that we can show right now. The, the left-hand side shows the design of the bridge. The right-hand side shows the result of our nonlinear time history analysis. As you can see, we are just moving slowly and surely to get these results for our engineers. With that, I'm going to finish with the few things that are pondering upon the large data set. We need to, although that the models take a short amount of time to finish, but there are a lot of them. So uh, that is a, a point of uh, concern. If anybody has a way that we can build machines that can do these faster and high performance computing, let us know because that is something that I like to know about. Um, we like to look into more than column drift ratio, maybe on seating of the deck. Uh, looking into skew bridges always is a high thing on my heart. And uh, issues related to ground motion scaling is something that we are right now working with Norm to make sure that uh, the work is reasonable. And the, it's very much related to the things that Florina talked this morning, that you can scale ground motion, but you need to make sure that the important secondary parameters of the ground motions are maintained. And with that, thank you very much for listening to me. And I really like to hear what you think about our work and giving us um, uh, your input. And shout out to Sharon for leading the project uh, on the administrative side and helping us throughout the project. Thank you so much. Sharon, we cannot hear you. Thank you, Parseen. Um, so our next speaker is Professor Michael Scott from OSU, and he'll be talking about um, our uh, develop our advanced procedure on our, our bridge RC slender columns. <laughs> 